to evaluate how our systems work we will use a set of tools now these could be real programs for example we could look at compilers uh, text processors for example we could look at GCC GCC is a program that we will run to evaluate its performance and this is generally used in spec benchmarks we call it um, spec 2006 and they update it all the time to run uh, uh, process architecture so you can get benchmarks for integers you could get benchmarks for floating point and so on you could also get uh, kernels and these are you know key pieces from a real program like linpack flash2 parsec they have a bunch of real applications and kernels in them um, you could look at benchmarks or you could look at traces one of the ways you could run things faster is to collect a trace of a program for example if you run an application and let's say you are at the network interface and you're interested to know what are the packets that are transmitted from this particular core to, to another core or what are all the packets in the system you could write some way of capturing that information you could find out what instant they are transmitted who is the source who is the destination uh, what is the size of the packet and you could capture all that information and then build a trace of it and run the trace on your um, application right so you could figure out uh, different aspects of the program you could capture them as a trace and run them so that you can speed up your uh, or, or you could figure out what are the bottlenecks or how is the performance so that you can dive deep uh, into understanding more details about it another important um, uh, evaluation is the hardware the cost of it and this is something that we evaluate we have to evaluate in terms of what is the latency what is the delay what is the area overhead how much area you're going to consume on the real estate what is the power estimation like how much how much power are you going to take for this uh, design uh, my general you know idea is that if you're going to put in you know enough hardware right you're going to double the hardware 2x hardware uh, and the amount of power is also you know 2x right that's generally not a good design right because you're throwing in more hardware you're consuming more power a good design or a good evaluation is where your performance is improving by 2x but your power is lesser than 2x maybe 1.5x or something like that so the, the relationship is you do not want to consume exactly the same amount of power to get the performance right the performance has to you, you the design should yield better performance for lesser power right that is that is how you want to improve the system cost so the hardware cost the evaluation of it is a very critical part of your entire system and then you want to simulate it right you simulate it many levels you simulate it instruction set you can do it at the rtl level you can do it at the gate level you can do it at the circuit level you have h files you have lots of models model sim which can be used some of you might probably seen this uh, you could use network simulators uh, you could use entire system simulator for example one of the very common simulators used today is called gem5 now this is a simulator that uh, that you can use to model an entire stack of uh, processor layers for example you could model operating system you could do the uh, the, the instruction set instruction set layout you could code it such that the exact instruction is executed and you could estimate the delay or the latency to execute a program you could study the traces you could look at the caches because you can build caches and them and so on now if you look at particular components uh, there could be simulators which could help you simulate each of these components discreetly so for example there's a simulator called um, DRAM sim now this simulator is probably focused more on simulating the DRAM design uh, similarly there is a simulator called cacti which looks at the cache design and it looks at you know for example from uh, cacti 1.0 today we have come up to cacti 6.0 and this is an online tool it's available on the HP website and you could go and you can give give your uh, cache sizing you could specify that uh, the size of the cache is um, uh, 10 uh, 
uh, kilobytes and you could specify or 100 kilobytes and you could specify the associativity and so on and it will tell you what is the power what is the energy what is the um, read latency what is the write latency it will give you the entire information right so many of the simulators people use in today's uh, world particularly in the research area is to combine these simulators rather than just use one simulator for everything right so at the architecture level some people may use gempy and then to evaluate individual components like uh, the caches you may use cacti or uh, to look at the dram you may look dram sim uh, to look at the network you may use net sim or something like that right so you may use discrete uh, simulators to evaluate the performance of the entire system and then some rules of thumb so one of the rules of thumb i said is you know performance and power right you generally don't want the both of the costs to be identical other costs other rules of thumbs could be uh, in the process of organization and we will see as we go in this course some of those uh, different uh, uh, designs now general application trends tend to be uh, where you have uh, new applications that would uh, derive more performance which would fuel advances in hardware uh, which will enable the de development of new applications and this is the cycle right this is the exponential increase in micro performance performance will yield uh, performance for new applications and as new applications are derived they would uh, you know feed into providing more performance and you are in the cycle of uh, uh, application performance now the range of performance demands generally it increases progressively with cost right if you have a bigger system the cost is going to increase right so there's more cost there's uh, uh, more performance and, and so on now if you look at various application properties that we would like to exploit in a computer design one of the big properties that we talk about a lot is locality in memory or io references so this could be both in space or this could be in time right spatial or temporal locality locality implies that if you access a particular data element the probability of accessing it again is great is high that is you would like to keep that element as close as possible to the processor that way if you want to access it you can access it really fast right and this is exploited highly in memory or io references because the memory is a hierarchy and as you go lower into the hierarchy the cost increases like for example if you are going to go into your dram and you want to bring an element a memory uh, uh, me element or 64 bits into your processor it might take anywhere between 100 to 200 clock cycles depending on the implementation whereas if it is going to be in your l1 cache it might take just one clock cycle if it is an l2 clash it might take two to five clock cycles if it is an l3 cache it can be 10 to 15 clock cycles so the locality tells us that if you're going to access an element you would like that element to be sitting in your l1 cache so that you can access it uh, at within one clock cycle right so that kind of spatial and temporal temporal locality is exploited extensively to improve performance the another thing that we use a lot is parallelism right we, we parallelize everything so that things run in at the same time so you could think about data level parallelism where the same operation on every element of a data sequence so for example if you write um, x of i right it's an array plus a equal to y of i right so what you're doing is you're computing a array of x elements so x of 0 x of 1 x of 2 x of 3 is added to a scalar a and stored into y of i is y of 0 y of 1 y of 2 y of three. so what you're doing is you're doing a constant computation and you're exploiting parallelism at the data level and we call this is very commonly done in vector processes you could also look at uh, instruction level parallelism where you look at independent instructions within the given program and you execute it uh, independent of the other so you could execute them out of order uh, or you could execute at different uh, time points and so on and the last one is thread level parallelism where you look at different threads in the program and you parallelize it so that you can run multiple threads at the same time 
The third thing we look at is predictability. That is, we predict the outcome of certain instructions. For example, if you look at branches, we predict how the branch is going to go before the branch is executed, which allows us to fetch the next instruction. This kind of control flow prediction is very critical because it will allow us, the program, not to stall waiting for the outcome of a particular program but continue and then if we are in the wrong direction, we roll back, right? Or if we are in the right direction, we already did the job. So the, the choice, the, the, because of this kind of prediction, it gives us a choice which allows us to pick one of the directions before we know the outcome of a particular instruction but then if you are wrong, we can roll back or if you are right, we continue on it. So the three important things that we try to exploit in programs is locality, we try to exploit parallelism, and we try to exploit predictability, where we can predict how these uh, directions are going to go. We also see a little bit of this in memory references, where we try to uh, prefetch values into the processor before uh, we want to execute them because the hope is that we're going to execute them in a few cycles uh, henceforth.